I think most people know your backstory, but let's go through it again just because it is incredible. You went to uh, uh, college, Williams College, which no one really knows of. It's a Division III. Um, you were an athlete there. You transferred to Michigan. You played three years at Michigan, was in a national title in Division Three and Division One, and then it ended up in the NBA. I, like, so what – like it was there a moment in time where you're like holy shit this is actually happening like I'm actually doing this because Williams College to the NBA that's that's insane I would imagine Williams College is not much different than a like a really good pickup game no offense to Williams <laughs> College but offense uh, um it, it's it's better than a really good pickup game I will say that uh small college basketball does not get the the recognition that it probably deserves um but with that being said, there, there were various moments throughout the journey when I was like, I can't believe this is actually happening. Um, but also, like, when I transferred to Michigan, I, I wasn't like some stud at Michigan either. Um, I was very much a role player. I was on good teams, fortunate enough to be on some, some really good teams and, and win a lot. Um, but, you know, it wasn't this, like, surefire thing that I was going to be an NBA player. So it's always kind of been this, like, an incremental process of growth and uh, realization that I, I might have a chance to be able to do something. So, um, you know, just, just been able to take advantage of opportunities, basically. Would you say that if uh, other kids that were in Division III, let's say Will, let's say Williams specifically, let's just use Williams as an example, if they played sports at Williams, if they had any bit of, like, can-do attitude or, like, stick to they too can be successful in life? Or do you think that maybe – um, you're just the unicorn and you're different than everyone else. No, I don't, I don't think I'm any sort of unicorn or different. Uh, you know, I don't want to put a ceiling or a, or a cap on anybody, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, if, if you're at a place like Williams, like Williams is a great school. So I, I wouldn't blame people for like leaning into the, the academic side of that, you mm -hmm. know, and, and being successful in, what a, if you're in not, another world. What if yeah. you're not very smart though? Yeah. You're also stupid. Yeah, you played, you're, you're dumb, but you play a sport at Williams. <laughs> Would you recommend maybe, if you have any eligibility left, maybe go into a big state school like Michigan uh, to use yeah. up that one year athletically and maybe get some buzz going towards your athletic career? Yeah, that, that probably seems like the right move. Okay. Um, yeah, honestly, at that point, if, if you're you know a Division three athlete and you're not very smart, I, I yeah. still think you're – you're capable of doing anything um, you put your mind to it but uh yeah yeah but, that's that you definitely got some things working against you at yeah. that point for sure yeah. it's, it's interesting on a real note you, you mentioned how you know you weren't sure or there were a lot of people out there who weren't sure that your game would translate from what it was in college as kind of a role player like a catch and shoot guy pretty much uh into the nba but as you, I guess you had a, you had the Heat kind of take a chance on you. They believed in you a little bit. Was there a moment when you were practicing, or maybe it was, you know, like in the developmental league where you realized, hey, I can do this. Like this is an actual opportunity for me that I can succeed at. Yeah, that, that probably came in summer league. Um, you know, I, I referenced kind of my role at Michigan, and I think summer league allowed me to kind of be viewed in a little bit of a different light, uh, and that I was asked to do. A little bit more and given some more opportunity so when i had a, i had a pretty good start to summer league and at that point i was like started thinking you know maybe i could i could maybe do this um and then i, I spent a year basically in the g league back and forth with the heat um and then from there it just kind of built you know over time mm -hmm. i read that uh that spolstra makes you run sprints if you pump fake in practice is that still true to like encourage you to to trust your shot and pull the trigger uh, we're, we're past that. Fortunately, that was, that was early on, uh, when I, when I first got to training camp my first year, just because like, I, I couldn't wrap my mind around this idea that like he wanted me to shoot every time I touched it. Basically, it was just like, so strange to me that I was on the same team as like Dwayne Wade who'd won like three NBA championships, but I'm the one, like the undrafted guy who averaged eight points a game his senior year in college to, to shoot it every time. So there's definitely some some you know push and pull with that, and then once I, I finally was able to kind of wrap my mind around that and just be like super aggressive, that's when it, it all kind of started to come together, I guess. Um, so your name is Duncan Robinson. Uh, how upset are your parents that you're not on the Spurs? Hmm. Uh, they're not upset at all. I think people, a lot of people, um, miss this one just basically in that like I was born pre. Tim Duncan, uh, 
or yeah, Tim Duncan, David Robinson era. So that mm. ju- it just doesn't line up. But with that being said, it would make for a great story if I were to be um, on the Spurs. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, it's just how it works out. Just so you know, we're going to take that completely out of context. That yeah. quote that you just trade said. Spurs. So uh, Duncan Robinson mm. demands trade to San Antonio. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, definitely uh, not demanding a trade anywhere. I'm, I'm very happy where I'm at. <laughs> how, how hated would you have been if you were a four year starter at Duke? The answer is very uh, hated, probably, by the way. Just your face and your name. Not, yeah. uh, probably not up there with like the JJ Redick and Grayson Allen, mostly just because I probably wouldn't have had like their statistical resume. Like, you got to remember, those guys are, are hated because of how great they were. Like they were great college players. Yes, there were some other things Tripping thrown people. in there. Yeah. Well, you know, whatever. Um, so I think <laughs> I would have been like a couple tiers below that. Maybe like a John Shire. I think he was kind of hated as well. He so would, maybe yeah. somewhere in that threshold. He was. He wasn't so much hated as he mu- was like punchable. Like you just wanted to hit him and bully him a little bit. I get. I get that a lot though. I get the punchable face a lot. I, I don't know. I don't know if you guys have any insight into this. What makes face punchable because clearly mine seems to be to the general public it's long you have a long mm-hmm. face not like in a bad way you're a good looking dude i can say that we're, we're pumping each other up in 2021 but i think there's like enough Thanks. there's enough face there you know yeah. what i mean like, i think you've got a good haircut now but i can tell that you used to not have a good haircut mm-hmm. so i would have liked to punch you like maybe five years ago mm-hmm. there yeah that's reason yeah i mm-hmm. i mean i i agree with the long face i i get made fun of a lot because i have a big head um, I think it's like low hanging fruit of a joke, but if people want to make it, that's fine. Yeah, no, I again, you're a good looking dude, but it's like it, whenever I think of punchable faces, people with tiny faces, you don't want to punch because you might miss. Yeah, but isn't there also the downside of like a, a bigger head potentially like then hurting your hand? Yeah, more? true, uh-huh. true. You got a Absolutely. lot of head. Yeah, <laughs> you punch back. Not always with bad. Your skull. Then, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> um, I so we're we're good friends with Mark Titus, and the story came out. I think he he. Uh, tweeted out in September that when you were at Michigan, you hit him up being like, hey, uh, wondering if I can get some career advice because you thought that uh, you didn't have a career in the NBA. So, one, I want to know, like, was that real? Were you actually like, this is over, I'm going to be a media person? And then, two, I'm looking at the text right now. You text like a crazy person. What was the breakup in these texts? It was mid-sentence that you'd start a new text. Yeah, so – once again, I think that got taken out of context a little bit. Um, I mean, I'm reading that the text. Was act- That's the context. Yeah, well, the, the first part of your statement. Okay. The, the crazy <laughs> part like that, that, that I'll address later. Okay. Um, the first part being in that it was actually for a class. We were supposed to, like, it was for a career planning class. So, you know, I, I was a sport management major, and we're in class, and we have to reach out to somebody in our field who we you know, feel that we might be interested in. So it's not like I could interview whatever, JJ Reddick, like that it just wouldn't have flown. So I reached out to Mark just because I'd listened to some of his stuff and I had a mutual connection. Um, and, but at that point, like it was something that I, I was potentially interested in at that point. I was definitely not like a surefire NBA player, um, but it was something to, to just kind of check the box and maybe have it in the back pocket uh, in terms of the the text, I don't remember the exact formatting of the text. Uh, I certainly didn't think that it would be under like public scrutiny at mm-hmm. this point. Mm-hmm. I thought it was just kind of between us, but uh, I understand that's how the world works, where just everything is uh, open to the general yeah, public. Me- okay, the so media runs with everything. Mark B- was big cloud media chasing. like Mark Titus. Yeah, yeah, he was cloud chasing you. We can just say it right now. He was straight up cloud chasing you. And it's fucked up what he did. <laughs> I don't think so because Mark and I are legitimately friends. So uh, with that being said, I don't, I don't mind. It's different if it was like some random person who was just kind of like being opportunistic in the moment and, and trying to go mm. viral or whatever. But he was legitimately just posting like, like him and I have constant communication now. Yeah. So it was, it was fine for me. I, I actually am realizing it right now. I put it together. So if you read it, if you look at the, the text, they're like broken up each in the middle of a sentence, a new paragraph. You know what it is? Titus was like the longest. Oh, I'm an Android dude. I'm a fucking hipster. I'm not I'm not going to yes. be an Apple guy. Like, uh, I'm not going to let all you guys tell me what to, to buy. And he recently became an iPhone guy like six months ago. So I bet that's why the text come through like that. 
I figured yeah, it out. No, I I totally sent it as one. Okay. Big. The formatting got screwed up on because his like him. his cricket wireless pay as you go special. So not yeah. only is he a clout chaser, but he made you look bad. So he's really just a shithead. I don't I don't think so. No, he's I'm a good a, friend well, of ours. Duncan, so we can say let, let me ask you this: it. Would you ever take a screenshot of one of his text messages, like where maybe he came off a little bit thirsty, mm -hmm. and then uh, publicize it on the internet and tell everybody about it? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we have we have different jobs. Like he he's in the the media sphere, so people want to see. Like he's responsible for producing content. I'm responsible for playing basketball. So I, I think that's I like that. that on a quote board, <laughs> Mark Titus. <laughs> he's it's true. You're right. Yeah. He's one of us blog boys, mm -hmm. and and you're out there actually <laughs> making millions, shooting hoops. His dream. You're the man in the fucking I arena. I love it. I love it. Get into put a jersey on, Mark. Put a jersey on. <laughs> Mark Mark wore a jersey. In fairness, he's a good college Caught, player. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he made it with like a, a big ass baggy white T-shirt. He made a complete it. joke of the competition, trying not to touch the ball. It's a farce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we actually do love Mark. Yeah, we so do. we can say all this stuff, and you're allowed to call him a shithead too if you'd like to. I'm I'm good. Mark Mark's a good guy. Okay. I'm a fan. Of him. He's yeah. had me on, on his show multiple times. Mm. Um, I hope to have him on mine. So you know, we're all good.